Yo, what's good, y'all? It's your host, Sage J. Sam, right here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm here to bring y'all a new What If. This being the What If movie to What If Naruto had Grammy's abilities. Thank y'all so much for tuning into this What If, and also thank you to the person who ended up commenting this down below. Yes, I read your comment, and yes, your wish has been granted, as here's the What If. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy. And for anyone that has their own What If ideas that you want me to check it out, then please comment down below. I'll see on whether or not I wanted to make them, and if I don't make them right away, then please do not worry, all right? I'll eventually end up getting to them, potentially you know just saying but enough of this guys i believe it's finally time for us to begin the what if so with that being said let's get started you're never gonna make it you're not good enough there's a million other people with the same stuff you really think you're different and you must be kidding think you're gonna hit it but you just don't get it it's impossible it's not probable you're responsible too many obstacles you gotta stop it yo you gotta take it slow you can't be a pro no waste your time no more who the fuck are you to tell me what to do to begin the what if we now start off with naruto's origins now you see, growing up, Naruto would still have the same backstory as he did in the main timeline, as he would eventually end up getting the Nine Tails sealed in him after Obito tries to off him, as well as trying to use the Nine Tails to destroy the rest of Konoha, which fails miserably thanks to Minato. But here's the thing, as Naruto gets the Nine Tails placed inside of him, it kind of activates something, as this activation would turn the entire world upside down, as this would be the birth of the strongest shinobi, no, the strongest being in the entire world of Naruto. As we now do a little bit of a time skip. In the streets of Konoha, multiple people would be enjoying their lives as they will be engaging in fun activities. After all, it was a day to celebrate the fact that the fox was gone. But the thing is, as they were all enjoying themselves on this very specific day, this went when suddenly they didn't stop as they feel pressure. Now this pressure would be around the entire area, causing everyone to stop moving, with some adults even stop breathing, as they do not want to upset whoever holds this aura. And this aura was something that they were all familiar with, as skipping through the village with a very happy expression would be none other than Naruto, as in both of his hands would be a bag full of ramen and a bag full of candy. And Naruto would be happy, blissfully walking as he then turns towards the villagers, many of them tensing under his gaze as Naruto would then give them a smile and a happy nod and wave. Now this would cause the villagers to respond in the exact same manner as they instantly begin to wave and say compliments to Naruto as well as greeting him. Naruto would say the same thing as he ends up walking away, which causes many of them to finally re feel relieved since they thought he was leaving, only for them to once again tense up as Naruto would then disappear and appear right in front of a nearby vendor. Now this vendor would instantly begin to fear for his life. Tears were literally building up in his eyes as he then slowly and shakily asked Naruto what exactly he wants, with Naruto pointing at a very peculiar fox mask. Now the vendor would see the mask and ask Naruto if he wants it, to which Naruto would nod with a happy smile and he instantly gives it away to Naruto, not charging him or anything. And Naruto after getting this would smile as he thanks the man, as he then once again ends up leaving the area, causing everyone to feel relieved. As everyone would continue on with their daily activities, as all the while they were thinking in their head about the encounter that went down, and they were very grateful that no one messed up this time or else things could have been complicated. Now you see, Naruto will be enjoying his life in this timeline as when Naruto was born, he had been gifted with an amazing and extraordinary ability. An ability that made him the strongest in his village at the solemn age of just 5 years old. Naruto at the age of 5 years old had awakened this ability, and this ability was so overpowering to the point that anyone that messes with Naruto, including the Hokage, would fall to him. As this will be the ability of Visionary. Now this ability allowed Naruto to make whatever he thinks of become reality using his own fantasies and imagination and turning it into reality. So let's say this, if Naruto believes that he is stronger than the Hokage, then he is stronger than the Hokage. And Naruto would have that thought process multiple times, resulting in many of them, many of the villagers and many of the shinobis fearing for their lives. Now it all started on a very peculiar day. You see, Naruto was at the orphanage at this time, and due to the fact that Haruzen thought that the villagers would respect his wishes about keeping Naruto's abilities a secret and have no prejudice towards the boy, well, he didn't give Naruto the apartment. So due to this, and due to his false trust, Naruto was placed in the orphanage, where he was treated badly by the, well, person who run the orphanage. As he would always end up ushering Naruto away, making sure he stayed away from the rest of the kids, and overall was a complete douche to the child. But you see, that would soon all change as the man would meet a very poor fate on the very day that Naruto would awaken his abilities. You see, it was on a certain day as Naruto was just relaxing as he had been ordered to clean the dishes by the person who was running the orphanage. And as he was doing this, the orphanage leader would end up walking as he ends up seeing Naruto and gets a scowl on his face. 
He begins to insult Naruto brutally while at the same time chugging down what seems to be alcohol. As he continues insulting Naruto and he begins to get into the point where he's so much in a drunken daze and so angry that he literally just chucks the bottle at Naruto. A kid Naruto. Now Naruto ends up taking the damage but he ends up getting up as he continues trying to get back to work, trying to ignore it all. But you see, while he was doing this, Naruto deep down was feeling upset, wondering why can't he be happy? Why can't he do the things that he wants to do? Why can't he be in control? And just like that, Naruto's entire mentality would then take a shift. And this shift will be exactly what the body needed in order to activate its ability. As the leader of the orphanage once again tries to attack Naruto, still being in a drunken rage, this is when he then stops as he ends up accidentally hitting a ginormous metal wall that appeared right before him. As he slams his fist full force into it, and because of the fact that he didn't have chakra or better yet didn't know how to control it, he ends up injuring his hand badly as he ends up screaming out in pain. His entire hand looks broken right now as he ends up cursing out at Naruto. But this is when Naruto would then end up making the thing disappear as he ends up turning back to the man. And as he does, the man would finally end up taking a good look at Naruto and as he does, he feels his blood run cold. As this is when Naruto, with a very hollow like expression, would then say that he was finally in control. As this is when the man's body would then transform into that of a rabbit. As he was transformed into a rabbit right in front of Naruto's eyes. And Naruto, after seeing the rabbit, would then pick it up in a very harmless manner, which was odd, as he ends up petting it, smiling, treating it kindly, as right outside his right outside the orphanage it was snowing. Now as Naruto would look at the snow, this would end up smirking as suddenly emerging out of the shadows would be none other than a bunch of wolves. As Naruto would see them, he would then smirk as this is when suddenly the man whose body was just transformed into a rabbit, his entire mind would end up returning back as he sees himself in rabbit form once again. He's surprised and shocked about this as he's even able to speak, but this is when he ends up turning his attention to see a much bigger Naruto that was currently holding him. And as he does, he then turns to the scene as he also sees the wolves. As he then realized what was about to happen, he would begin to shake his head, begins to hit itself, but unfortunately it wasn't a dream. No, this was reality. As this is when Naruto would then grab him and gently put him out outside. He tries to get back in, but unfortunately Naruto had already closed the door. As this is when Naruto would then look at the wolves before telling them to enjoy their meal. And instantly, the wolves, after hearing this, would then charge directly towards the rabbit as the orphanage leader would then scream out that entire night, no one even listening to him. As this will be the very first instance of Naruto using his abilities. Now, eventually, over time, Haru's will end up catching wind about the fact that the leader of the orphanage was gone, so he ends up heading to the orphanage. Now, after a while, he begins to ask all the children what was going on, with many of the kids not responding, and so eventually ends up arriving towards Naruto. Now when he does, he gets immediately disturbed by the fact that Naruto, after hearing that the orphanage leader was gone, he just ended up chuckling and just told Aruzen that he made sure he disappeared. After all, the wolves are hungry, were hungry. And hearing this caused Aruzen to instantly begin to tense up as he begins to ask Naruto what he did, with Naruto just telling him that he just fed the wolves. That was it. This caused once again Haruzen to be disturbed, as this is when Naruto would look at Haruzen's hat. And right in front of Haruzen's eyes, Naruto will make an exact replica of the hat, asking Haruzen if it looks good on him. Haruzen will be so in shock to the point where he ends up taking Naruto away from the orphanage and begins to ask Naruto what happened, or more precisely, how he did it. To which Naruto begins to explain about what happened. Now eventually, after giving a whole detailed report about all the events that had occurred in the orphanage, as well as the end for the orphanage leader, this will cause Haruzen to be terrified about everything that happened, as well as blame himself about what had occurred. Now as he does, he ends up looking towards Naruto and asking him anything else that he could do with this ability. But you see, the thing is, Naruto is still a child, so he can't exactly explain all that much to it. All Naruto ends up telling Haruzen that he ends up enjoying his life a little bit more now, and from now on, he's going to end up living life to the fullest. And hearing this caused Haruzen to have a feeling. He didn't know if it was good or bad, but all he could tell was the fact that Naruto had just awakened something that was about to flip the world on its head. And he doesn't know if it's going to be for the good or for the bad. As we now turn back to the present. After everything that happened with Naruto and after those events had passed, Haruzen had taken it upon himself to train Naruto. And the main reason for this one is the fact that if Naruto's abilities are to be left unchecked, then Naruto could potentially end up annihilating the entire village, all for one rude comment 
or from someone doing something mean to him. And Haruzen got so worried about that to the point where he actually passed on a new law across the entire leaf village. And it was the fact that everyone must respect and be nice to Naruto. And it also teaches this to the children as well. Or else, things could go potentially very bad for them. Whether it be Haruzen himself making sure that they act right, or Naruto does. Now you see, during that time, Naruto will be training with Haruzen. And the thing is, anything that Haruzen could potentially teach Naruto, Naruto will learn it at an instant. Whether it be a jutsu, Naruto will be able to copy it instantly thanks to his imagination. And not only that, but he will be able to make it better. And anything that Haruzen could do, Naruto could do it in a way bigger and more powerful way. Now, seeing this after multiple times, Haruzen begins to get more and more afraid about Naruto, as he thinks that Naruto is growing way too powerful way too fast. And not only that, but he begins to feel the worst considering the fact that although Naruto was growing stronger, mentally Naruto was still a kid. So if anybody, any kid or any adult were to annoy Naruto, Naruto can use all the teachings that Haruzen had just given to him and use it to end off that person that annoyed him or pissed him off. And that terrified Haruzen. Now, this will be in the mind of Haruzen for a while as he thinks that stopping Naruto from doing any of this will be impossible until finally he discovered a weakness or at least a temporary limitation for Naruto. Because you see, on a very specific day, as Naruto will be trained with Haruzen, and once again did something that Haruzen did but in a much bigger and better way, Naruto begins to talk a bunch of garbage and as he does, he even begins to outright state that he believes that he's stronger than Haruzen. Now this will end up causing Naruto's young body to take up a large amount of energy as his body begins to grow stronger and stronger. And Haruzen after seeing this begins to tense up since he fully believes that Naruto is about to surpass him right now, now that he believes that he's stronger than him. But this when to his surprise, Naruto's bones would then shatter as he ends up screaming out in pain as he was in so much pain to the point where he passed out. Haruzen would be so surprised but still nonetheless took Naruto back to the hospital as he had finally discovered Naruto's limit. This being the fact that although Naruto's imagination can go very far, his body currently still can't. That being the fact that while eventually Naruto can grow stronger enough to the point where he can actually handle that much power, currently right now it does take time for his body to handle the ability of his imagination. And after discovering this, Haruzen was so happy. After so many nights of stressing over this, he finally felt as if he had a decent plan, or at least a small bit of a chance to counter Naruto's ability, although it's extremely small. As now that Haruzen had a backup plan for Naruto at this point currently, he would continue training Naruto and make sure that his mind had mentally matured. As we turn back to the present, as we see Haruzen now finishing up his paperwork and enjoying himself, this one suddenly bursting open his door and levitating would be none other than Naruto. Naruto will be smiling at Haruzen as Haruzen would then wave at Naruto, as he ends up seeing bags full of candy as well as bags full of ramen, and not only that but the fox mask. Haruzen sighed as he asked Naruto if he paid for any of this, to which Naruto would then state that he didn't. And hearing this would cause Haruzen to get serious as he would then release pressure as well as hardening his eyes, as he would then tell Naruto to go back and pay for it. And you see, although this would have worked on a much younger Naruto, by this point Naruto is a whole 9 years old and by this point he's the strongest person in the entire village, as this is when Naruto would then ask Haruzen in a very hollow like tone, who's gonna make him. And Hiruzen, after hearing this, would then release the pressure as he sighs. As he looks at Naruto before telling him that that arrogance is going to be his downfall one day, or Naruto just chuckling and then sitting back down, enjoying the candy and ramen that he just got. You see, Hiruzen's plan is to emotionally mature Naruto to the point where he's actually able to use his abilities carefully. While it did end up working, it also ended up having some drawbacks, and it's the fact that Naruto had grown extremely arrogant. Which the fact is, is the fact that Naruto, after just 4 years, had become the strongest person in the entire village. His body can finally handle the strength of that of the Hokage. So if Naruto were to believe that he was stronger than the Hokage, then he ends up becoming stronger than the Hokage. Now this ends up causing Haruzen to be very upset. Especially since once Naruto found out that he was stronger than the Hokage, and pretty much everyone else in the village, Naruto had straight up declared it to everyone around as well as released the pressure that if anyone messes with him from now on or if anyone is rude to him, then he will gladly show them the strength of someone who surpasses the Hokage. So in basic terms, Naruto had threatened the entire village. And with Haruzen's law as well as Naruto's threat, this has caused the village to, th to think four times before being mean to Naruto or saying anything snarky about him or really doing anything that may offend him. As after all, if Naruto is able to release a pressure like that that covers the entire village, and even state that he's stronger than Hokage, then they were beyond screwed. As this is where we then have another time skip. So we now turn to a much older Naruto. 
Because you see, by this point, Naruto has reached the solemn age of 12, the very age where students in the academy will end up going to become shinobi, while also getting the rank of Genin. But you see, Naruto wasn't like most kids. In fact, by this point, Naruto has undergone multiple missions, doing it for the Hidden Leaf Village. Because you see, with Naruto being the strongest shinobi that they had, and being at such a young age, while also being personally trained by the Hokage, Naruto had all the requirements to become that of a Jonin. So, with no other choice, and honestly it would be kind of criminal to put Naruto as a Genin with his overpowered ability, so with no other choice, Haruzen had promoted him to Jonin, right off the bat. And not only Jesse Jonin, but Jonin who is actually a contender to become the next Okage. With the only thing that Naruto is missing is the fact that he needs more experience. As we turn to the current Naruto, you see, in those four years, Naruto's mentality has taken a change. Because while Naruto still is very arrogant and can still have his very threatening side, Naruto decides to reserve that only for enemies. And not only that, but Naruto actually starts paying respect to others. For example, whenever he goes out to buy something, he actually pays for it this time instead of just taking it away. And not only that, but he's much more kinder to the people. Not in like a false kindness, like, oh, I'm threatening you away kind of kindness, but like true and genuine kindness. Now, this will cause the villagers, who at first, like, extremely were terrified of the kid and honestly kind of hated him, to now actually turn to a sign of respect, and some of them actually feel genuinely happy for him, with many of them actually expressing kindness to him out of their own good nature. Although there is still some of the villagers that have their own biases against the boy because of the Ninetales attack, Naruto was living a quite a good life, honestly. As we now turn back to the team being assembled, Naruto will be there listening to all of them until finally he ends up smiling as his name will be called upon as Naruto's team will be that of Sasuke, Sakura, and Shino. Since Naruto in this timeline isn't part of the academy, and actually is a jonin and a well-respected one, Naruto is actually able and capable of leading a team. Not only that, but he has enough experience to do so. So yeah, he ends up actually getting his own getting team, with Naruto chuckling, thinking that this is going to be very amusing. As we now turn to when Naruto ends up meeting his team. So at first, as soon as Naruto ends up meeting his team, Instantly, they begin to have their own bias against Naruto, as Sakura just claims that Naruto is the same age as them and believes that he's pulling a prank. While Sasuke, although he doesn't say anything to Naruto, just simply ignoring him, he thinks in his mind that Naruto is just some kid that probably flunk out of the academy and was just trying to pull a prank on them, while also thinking in his mind that he's stronger than Naruto. All the while, Shino would be the only one to not show any bias towards Naruto and actually be, and actually be respectful to him. And the main reason for this one, although he did have his doubts, the one thing he could always trust in is his bugs. And his bugs actually told him that Naruto was on a completely different level. The pressure as well as the amount of chakra that Naruto had was terrifying, and he didn't even want to imagine what the kid could do to all of them. As we turned to Naruto as he was sitting down on top of a desk with a relaxed smile on his face. As Sakura will be done with her rant after explaining why Naruto couldn't be their joining sensei, this is when Naruto decides to make one thing very clear. As he ends up unleashing this pressure, and this pressure falls upon everyone in the room, causing every last one of them to fall from their seats and collapse down to the ground, barely, barely being able to breathe. As every last one of them can literally feel as if they're about to die any second from now. As this is when Naruto would then begin to state, and also make himself very clear, that he was their Jonin sensei. And that it didn't matter if he was the same age as them. After all, he had twice the amount of experience when it comes to being a shinobi. And he had slaughtered more than he can even count. As after explaining this and making his intentions very clear, Naruto would then release the pressure, causing the rest of Team 7 to stumble up, although every last one of them would have a renewed fear of Naruto. Shino would still be very respectful to him, Sakura would be very in fear of him, but now listens and actually is very cautious with, with what she says as well as how she acts, and Sasuke, well he was very conflicted. Because on one hand, he had gained a new fear and respect towards Naruto, on the other hand, his inferiority complex was kicking in as he was honestly feeling very jealous of Naruto and his power, wondering how he became so strong, especially since both of them were at the same age. But still nonetheless, Naruto had finally proven his point, and it made something very certainly clear, and it was the fact that Naruto was the Jonin Sensei, and he would be the one leading Team 7. As with that, we now do a time skip. Now you see, Naruto was not like Kakashi in the main timeline where Kakashi gave them a belt test and actually thought they are going to work together even though they didn't have any prior connections. And you see, Naruto could already tell that each and one of these individuals did not have a bond with each other. Sakura's only bond was the fact that she actually had a crush on Sasuke, but that didn't even matter to Naruto. After all, who cares about that in the shinobi world? 
And another thing was the fact that Sasuke, well, he didn't feel any affection towards Sakura, and he didn't particularly care about Shino either. In fact, the only interest that Sasuke had shown was the fact that he was interested in Naruto's abilities. And Shino, well, he had been the hardest one to read, but nonetheless, Naruto was able to understand the boy quite well. So, with that being said, Naruto would instantly get right into doing d rank missions with his team, to which they do not like it at all, and Naruto had to admit he didn't like it either. But at the end of the day, it was still very necessary. And the main reason for this one was because of the fact that it gave Naruto an opportunity to train his team, while at the same time allowing them to get paid. As Naruto would do this for a couple of months, supplying his team with the resources as well as the intelligence needed to complete certain missions, as well as the fact he also supplies them with jutsus and you know different ways of how to use their jutsus. So yeah, Naruto was really boosting up his team. All the while, every single member of his team was very impressed with their progress. As we first turn to Sakura. When Sakura first joined the team, she was honestly the weakest member of the team, not being able to beat Sasuke and not being able to beat Shino. But by now, Sakura is actually able to keep up with both members of her team, at least when they're not at full power. And in this timeline, she actually has a bunch of different things and skill sets that help with being a shinobi. She has access to two of her elements, this being water and earth. She has an assortment of abilities as well as jutsus that can help in her missions. Not only that, but she also has some pretty good medical knowledge and access to some basic medical jutsus. And not only that, but she also has access to genjutsu, which she's extremely good at as well. And not only that, but she's actually pretty decent at hand-to-hand -hand combat. So already, Sakura had abilities that even Chunin at this point didn't have. And she, and what's crazy is the fact that she isn't even the strongest member on the team. As Sasuke was next up, Sasuke's abilities have truly have grown. As he had at this point, he had already unlocked the three Tomoe. And not only that, but he had an assortment of fire jutsus and lightning jutsus. Sasuke was very impressed with his growth as, although he was very jealous of Naruto's power, he was honestly very happy to have Naruto as a sensei, since he had grown this strong in only a couple of months. As Sasuke's speed and power was so powerful to the point where he could even keep up with that of high tuning, and possibly, if he's able to get to catch them off guard, even that of a low jonin. And finally, there was Shino. And let me tell you right now, Shino could possibly be the most busted member. Although Sasuke did have a Sharingan and everything, and also his assortment of lightning jutsus and fire jutsus, Shino had truly begun to awaken his potential as well, as he got an assortment of bugs as well as different other abilities that he got from them, and he's able to combine them with his nature elements, this being wind and lightning. As he's able to combine them all along with his bugs in order to take down enemies in an instant, without having to even lift a finger. Since he's literally, he's literally able to hide the presence of his bugs, which actually make it to where he's able to take out enemies without them even noticing. So yeah, all of Naruto's team were honestly an extremely powerful threat to the point where every other team just pales into in comparison. As finally after the months would go by of doing D rank missions and training his team, Naruto would then finally decide to take them on their first C rank, this being going to the land of the waves. Now at first when Tazan ends up meeting Team 7, he has his own bias towards them, but after sensing the pressure off of Naruto, he decides to accept them. So when they end up going to the land of the waves, they end up eventually end up encountering a puddle, but the thing is this was again Jutsu, as this is when the two tuning brothers would then rush out. But as they were rushing though, this is when Sasuke, Shino, as well as Sakura would then all work together as they were able to take them down easily. Now this was a surprise uh, Tazuna considering the fact that he thought that the rest of them were going to be doing much. But this is when he actually then takes in the full appearance of these guys as he realized that they were no joke. Now Naruto's, Naruto's outfit would be that similar to of uh, Grammy's, this being he's wearing like the white coat and everything along with the white hoodie, while the rest of his team also had their own attires as every last one of them will be wearing an attire that's fit for a shinobi. And this will actually very impress Tazuna as when he first saw them, they weren't wearing their shinobi attires. They were just wearing like basic civilian clothing, but now they're actually true shinobi. So now we're actually realizing that he's actually in pretty good hands, Tazuna felt more safe as it will continue on the path. But as they were walking though, this is when Naruto wouldn't stop as this is when he then ends up turning around to catch a blade, the executioner blade exactly. As this when suddenly jumping through the trees will be none other than Zabuza Momochi, Demon of the Hidden Mist. Now instantly seeing Zabuza, the rest of the team then tense up, as this is when they then prepare to fight. But as they do, Zabuza would then begin to release a bloodlust as he then supposedly blitzes Naruto, taking his sword back as he then kicks him away. But as he tries to kick Naruto, he would then be surprised as when he does end up landing the blow, Naruto's body was extremely durable, to the point where he Naruto didn't even move an inch. 
This will surprise Zabuza as he ends up jumping away before commenting on Naruto as well as the rest of the Genin that were there. He begins to say that Naruto was different compared to the others, but still nonetheless said that he was going to take them all down. And as he does, he once again begins to exude bloodlust. And although Team 7 have been getting stronger and stronger, they still tend to when it comes to true bloodlust, especially of that of Zabuza. So due to this, they end up actually tensing up and actually freezing up a little bit due to the bloodlust, only for that bloodlust to then disappear thanks to Naruto. Now Naruto, after seeing his team then tense up, realized that they're still not ready to take down Zabuza at this point. So he decides to truly show them what he's capable of. As he begins to approach Zabuza though, this is when suddenly Sakura will then grab onto Naruto's hand before asking him if he truly can take him down. Now Naruto looks at her confused as he ends up looking at the rest of his team as every last one of them would deem their own worried expression. As Sasuke tries to hide it with a scowl, although Naruto can see the look of concern on his face, and Shina would also have a, well, a very stoic expression, but Naruto can tell that he is actually worried about him as well. And after seeing that they were worried, Naruto would then calmly pat Sakura on the head in a brotherly way, alright? They're like siblings, okay? Not in a relationship. But either way, Naruto would then pat Sakura on the head, and then once again explain to every last one of them that he was the strongest. And he was finally going to show them what that truly meant. Now, Zabuza, after hearing Naruto's statement, would then begin to laugh, stating that Naruto was arrogant, as he then rushes at him, trying to kill him. But you see, as he rushes though, this is when suddenly, as he throws the Executioner Blade or tries to slash at Naruto with the Executioner Blade, this is when, to his surprise, number one, the Executioner Blade was gone from his hands. Number two was the fact that he was just sent flying. As Naruto, in that very split instance, not only did he take the Executioner Blade from Zabuza, but he also sent him flying with a powerful punch, as Zabuza would be sent flying and crashing into the water. Now the rest of Team 7 will be very surprised at this, and also Haku who is currently hiding away. Now eventually Zabuza will end up re-emerging from the water, although he was pissed off, as he begins to unleash the Water Dragon Jutsu. Now Naruto would see the Water Dragon Jutsu, and he would be very impressed. He would begin to applaud Zabuza as he ends up dropping the Executioner's Blade before walking right towards the Water Dragon. Now Zabuza seeing this would call Naruto a fool, as he would then attack Naruto with the Water Dragon, but as he does, to his very surprise, Naruto walks right through the water dragon, as the water dragon will be split in two as Naruto continues walking through it. Zabuza will be so in shock, he couldn't believe it. How could he do that? He begins to ask Naruto millions amount of questions, calling Naruto a cheater, with Naruto just ignoring it all, just stating to Zabuza once again that he was the strongest, and that Zabuza was just way too weak. And after hearing that, that finally set off Zabuza, as then he then tries to hit Naruto with the Vortex Jutsu. And Naruto, after seeing the Vortex Jutsu, would then smile, just as it was approaching him. But as the Vortex was about to hit Naruto, Naruto would then suddenly stick out his hand as he then imagines himself absorbing it. And he does so, absorbing it all and actually using it to increase his chakra. As this would surprise Zabuza, as well as everyone else on the team. As Zabuza tries to explain that this was impossible and that what Naruto was doing was something that couldn't exist, Naruto would then state that he can make anything exist. As this is when Zabuza begins to finally realize who Naruto was. Cause you see, in the bingo book, four years ago, a new entry was added. As this entry was just simply called Naruto. But you see, there was a problem with this one. And it was the fact that in this entry, there was no information about him at all. Everything that existed or anything of his abilities were completely gone. There was nothing to even say about it. As the only thing that entry told them was to run on sight. Don't even think about challenging him. As Zawazo would then take a look at Naruto, he finally understand. As this is when he then tries again with the Narujutsu, only to then stop as this is when Naruto would then suddenly end up releasing the same Jutsu that Zawazo did, but 10 times stronger and way more destructive. As Zawazo would be caught in this vortex that will surround him and completely destroy his body, leaving nothing behind. As Haku, who was watching it all, would then try to jump in, trying to save Zawazo, but he himself would also be destroyed by the vortex, leaving nothing behind. As Naruto would look at all the destruction he caused with an emotionless expression. All the while the rest of Team 7 as well as Tazuna would look on in shock. As this will signify the day that Team 7 finally realized what Naruto meant when he said that he was the strongest. As after this, Team 7 would complete the rest of the land of the waves with ease. As now with Zabuza as well as Haku gone, they are now able to defeat Gato as well as the rest of his men with ease. Allowing for the land of the waves to be free and also gaining them a new ally. As we now turn to when they arrive back at Konoha. Since they, since they ended returning back to Konoha much earlier, 
This ends up giving Team 7 enough time to train for the tuning exams, and with Naruto's guidance they once again grow even stronger. As we now turn to the day of the tuning exams. Now on the day of the tuning exams, after Naruto gives them the green light, Team 7 will be blowing past through the, through the tuning exams with ease, as every last one of them were confident in their abilities and their teamwork. Not only that, but they were way stronger. Now eventually, after Team 7 ends up passing the first portion of the exams, it will be finally time for them to go to the Forest of Death. To which they end up going to the Forest of Death relatively easily at first, as they end up encountering a team that had the same scroll as them and they're able to take them down easily. But this is when trouble would then arise for them as Orochimaru would make his appearance known and it instantly we get to attacking Team 7. However, thanks to all of Naruto's training, Team 7 were really well equipped and prepared for this as they were able to work together and actually land a couple of blows on Orochimaru, to the point where Orochimaru had to substitute his body not one, but two times throughout this fight, causing Orochimaru to be moderately tired. But still nonetheless, he was able to beat Team 7, as although they were strong, they were not at that signing level just yet. And just when Orochimaru was actually about to bite down on Sasuke's neck to claim his prize, this is when, suddenly, he would then feel a force, then end up blasting him off, as he ends up getting slammed through multiple trees, just as Naruto will make his appearance known. Now seeing Naruto, Orochimaru will be very impressed with his strength, but the thing is, he, like many others, still thought that Naruto was a Genin. So he begins to question Naruto what team he was on, and also telling Naruto that he was foolish to interfere. But this is when Naruto would then surprise Orochimaru as he tries to attack him, as Orochimaru would actually feel his attack get blocked, and not only that, but he feels a vicious blow get hit to his stomach, as it will cause him to have no choice but to force his way out of another body, as he now has substituted three bodies, making him pretty exhausted. He begins to actually wonder who this kid was, as Naruto begins to barrage Orochimaru with multiple blows, causing him to have no choice but to substitute. Now after many consecutive blows, Orochimaru had finally realized that Naruto was not no normal Genin, as he begins to ask Naruto who he was. As this would Naruto would then reveal his name, as well as the fact that he was the strongest, Orochimaru after hearing this, would begin to actually chuckle, as he admits that Naruto was strong, but there's no way he could actually be the strongest in the entire village, as he begins to underestimate Naruto, but still fights him with caution. But as he was fighting Naruto though, he begins to feel himself get overpowered, as everything he threw at Naruto, Naruto would be able to walk right through it, as Naruto had simply believed that anything Orochimaru threw at him had no effect. And it seemed to be proven true as everything that Orochimaru threw at Naruto, Naruto would be unaffected by it. Now this would cause Orochimaru to lash out angrily as he tries to get any damage on Naruto but it was useless, as Naruto was way too strong, way too powerful, and overall he was something that Orochimaru couldn't handle. As after getting beaten down brutally, Orochimaru would try one last chance to get away, but unfortunately Naruto would crush it as he defeated the little snake that Orochimaru tried to use to slither away, leaving Orochimaru there. Now Orochimaru after seeing, seeing this would then curse out at Naruto, but he would still end up chuckling since he has a backup plan, this being the curse marks. But unfortunately for Orochimaru, Naruto had already defeated him. As this is when Naruto would then suddenly end up imagining a sword. If you are on reference, think of Ichigo's sword after he went Bankai for the first time. As this is when Naruto would then imagine that this sword had the ability to kill off and erase any life force of the person that ended up getting inflicted damage by the blade. As after imagining how the blade would be, Naruto would look at the sword as it would then have this weird and eerie glow on it, which made Naruto smile. And Orochimaru would see this too and begin to panic as he tries to get away, but unfortunately Naruto had blocked out his escape. Seeing that this was the end, Orochimaru would try one last tactic as he tries to bring out the Kusunagi sword as a way to catch Naruto off guard, but unfortunately it was too late as Naruto would be able to dodge out of the way of the attack and suddenly stab Orochimaru through the chest. As just like that, Orochimaru and any essence of his soul that was left behind had been completely erased, as this would be the end for Orochimaru. Now, back at the rest of the training exams, eventually Team 7 will be able to wake up, Sakura being the first one, and they are able to complete the exams without going through too much trouble. They do end up encountering the sound team, but they are able to defeat it with relative ease, considering the fact that every last one of them is stronger. Also, thanks to the fact that Naruto had eliminated Orochimaru, the curse mark that Sasuke got, now that the essence was just removed, all he got was a generous chakra boost, so he's able to do jutsus freely without the idea of getting corrupted or turning evil thanks to Orochimaru's influence. So after that, Team 7 will end up going through the second portion of the tuning exams relatively easily, as when it was finally time for the preliminaries, every last one of them were able to get past their matches with ease, as after this, they get the month of training. Now, Naruto originally had planned to train his team by himself, but this is when, surprisingly, Kakashi had decided to offer training to Sasuke. Now, Naruto was extremely confused as to why Kakashi wanted to train Sasuke, and Kakashi actually ended up revealing something surprising, as apparently Kakashi actually knew Naruto's parents, 
which by the way yes naruto knows about the fox and also knows about his parents but the thing is they're long gone now so he doesn't really reflect on it too much and after kakashi ends up explaining about everything and about how he feels guilty about not being there for naruto naruto decided to save him from the pity show and just tell him that he's allowed to train sasuke but sasuke still needs to train with him as well as the rest of the team to which kakashi ends up accepting so after this sasuke ends up going to train with kakashi as that will be his extra training for the shooting exams and not only that but every last member of team 7 would also get an instructor to train with. As Naruto he felt kind of guilty about the fact that Sasuke was the only one to get some extra training from a different joining instructor so he decided to look for others to train his team. As he eventually ended up finding Kuronai for Sakura since Sakura needed some more genjutsu and Shino already found one as he already had the, his father being the one to train him since his father was the head of the clan. So now with this, Team 7 will be getting even more stronger, as every last one of the instructors that were teaching Naruto's Genin would be very surprised. Since by this point of the story, they all had already gotten to the level of Chunin, but by the end of the month time skip, they will all be at Jonin level, and this surprised every last one of them. Shino was able to adapt to his father's techniques rapidly fast, to the point where he's actually able to master them all in one month, and Sasuke, he will be able to actually keep up with Kakashi by the end of the one month time skip, to the point where he's actually able to even beat him, although that's only once after 10 matches. And Sakura, she already completely outweighed Kuranai, and even able to do Genjutsu even better than her, which surprised her. And this was mostly due to the fact that they got training from 3 other instructors, and not only that but they also continuously got training from Naruto as he made sure to spend time with his team. As for Naruto throughout this entire time skip, he actually got paid a visit by Jiraiya. Jiraiya decided to visit Naruto, finally deciding to reveal himself to him, and he would actually be deeply surprised after he got the report from Hiruzen, as apparently Naruto was now the strongest shinobi in the entire village. Now Jiraiya wanted to test it out at first, but he would be easily beaten by Naruto, who simply believed about the fact that when it comes to fighting Jiraiya, he simply is stronger. And it actually ended up turning out to be true, since Naruto believed it. But still nonetheless, Jiraiya was deeply impressed by Naruto, while also feeling very disappointed in himself considering the fact that Naruto had already surpassed him without his help. As due to this, Jiraiya just spends majority of his time trying to talk to Naruto as well as trying to make sure that none of the members of the Akatsuki can end up approaching him, although he's pretty confident by now that Naruto can handle every last one of them. Now also on that note, he also ends up telling Naruto that he's his godfather, which of course results in Naruto getting very upset with him and doing something very unimaginable just to make sure that Jiraiya pays a little bit for his crimes. To which Jiraiya has to admit, he deserves it. But eventually after that, Naruto is pretty chill with Jiraiya. He doesn't really care much about the whole thing since he's been taking care of himself this entire time. And not only that, but he's already grown to become the strongest and already understands about the rules of responsibility. And after understanding all of this and after getting to know Naruto, Jiraiya felt a little bit happier. But not only that, but he also believed that Naruto could be the one to take care of it. He could be the one to master the Nine Tails' Chakra. As after the following days, as the final of the days of the Atuni exams were arriving, Jiraiya decides to give Naruto the key to the Nine Tails' cell, as he tells Naruto that he fully believes that Naruto can be the one to tame the Nine Tails' chakra. And Naruto, after hearing this, he actually did not want to do it, considering the fact that he was pretty sure that his power was just enough as it is. Which, I mean, it is pretty true. But still, nonetheless, Naruto took the key as Jiraiya would continue on with his spy network. As after this, we can now continue on with the story. As we now turn to the day of the training exams, and to the surprise of everyone except for those that trained them, Sakura, Sasuke, and Shino were all able to blitz the entire training exams, as every last one of their opponents were able to be defeated instantly. Now eventually it'll be time for Sasuke to face off against Gara since that was the most anticipated fight, but to the surprise of everyone, Gara was defeated instantly. The boy couldn't do anything, his sand defense was way too slow so he couldn't actually reach Sasuke. And Sasuke's manipulation of lightning and fire were on that of Jonin level, which surprised many of them. But not only just Sasuke, but every last one of them showed a very impressive performance. Sakura, Shino, Sasuke, all of them. And this caused Naruto to be very proud of them. Especially since he actually made a quite a good amount of money since many new Jonin that have recently become Jonin as they entered the Shinobi system had thought that their teams were going to perform way better than Naruto's team since since they all believed that since Naruto was younger, he wouldn't be able to deal with these kids. But unfortunately, Naruto had proved them wrong. As with that, Naruto's team ended up passing the training exams. Although the Konoha crush was supposed to happen as Gar was planning to actually release the Shikaku, unfortunately, Sasuke had already knocked him out. And before the Shikaku can be unleashed, Naruto had already decided to step into the ring as 
He could already feel the tail beast's chakra inside the boy. He actually sensed it for a while. So when the Shikaku was actually about to release itself, Naruto was actually able to place another seal on it. A seal that prevented the Shikaku from influencing Gara, allowing him to rest. As with that, Garo ends up finally going to sleep for the very first time, although he's unconscious. And after that, the rest of Naruto's team will go through the rest of the tuning exams. With the tuning exams ending with Shino and Sasuke facing off against each other, which by the way, Sakura ended up facing off against Sasuke, and she actually put up a pretty decent fight. Honestly, the fight was very close, all the way until Sasuke decided to even use his full power against her, and although she was able to hold on for a little bit, unfortunately, with the 3 Tomoe Sharingan and a bunch of other abilities, Sasuke was able to beat Sakura. Although, at least she proved herself to be strong enough to the point where she's actually able to be on tuning level, at least, and joining level at best. As after that, Sasuke and Shino would fight, and to the surprise of everyone, Shino would win. Although Sasuke was extremely powerful at this point, and also had an array of fire and lightning jutsus, unfortunately for him though, it was the fact that Shino specialized in assassination and stealth, as well as speed. So due to this, Shino was actually able to beat Sasuke, as he was able to have one of his bugs paralyze Sasuke while they were in the midst of a generous jutsu collision, and when Sasuke realized he was paralyzed, he was unfortunately too late as Shino was able to get close enough to the point where he's actually able to have Sasuke defeated, knocking him out unconscious. So with that, Shino ends up winning the tuning exams and later on eventually, all three of them would end up getting promoted to tuning. And not only that, but the Konoha crush never happens. As now that Orochimaru is truly gone from the series at this point, that will end up leaving Team 7 as well as the rest of Konoha to prosper and continue on growing. All the while, the rest of the team of Suna are actually able to go back safely, with Gara actually being able to control the Shikaku's influence and actually being able to sleep. As this is where we then do another time skip. Now you see, throughout the entire time skip, Naruto and his team will undergo a few missions. As eventually they end up getting a mission to search for Tsunade, as the Hidden Leaf Village, although it's been prospering quite well, is about time she ends up returning back to the village. And now while they do end up encountering Tsunade, she ends up acting like how she did at first, as she was still drinking quite a lot and she was being extremely rude and disrespectful to the Hokage. And this will actually cause Naruto to actually show the very first time of being annoyed, which surprises many members of Team 7, since throughout the entire time that Naruto's been on Team 7, he's been most of the time very calmly and oftentimes just be a total troll most of the time. Like he's very calm and actually polite with them, but most of the time when it comes to training, he's very like egging them on and very much taunting them. So most of the time they never get to see Naruto get that serious unless they're out there on a mission or unless Naruto has to end someone. It's pretty much the only time Naruto ever gets serious is when there's actually a serious situation. But this is actually the very first time they actually see Naruto get annoyed. As this is when Naruto instantly sobers up Tsunade and tells her to get outside since they're about to make a bet. If Naruto is able to beat Tsunade, she ends up returning back to the village. And if he ends up losing, then he quits being a shinobi. And Tsunade, after hearing this, would actually agree, which actually surprised everyone in Team 7 since they couldn't believe that Naruto was actually putting at stake his shinobi career. But the one thing that Tsunade didn't know was the fact that she made a sucker's bet. Since the thing is, not only was she actually trying to fight someone who was willing to put their dream on the line, but it was the fact that this person obviously was 100% confident that they, that they can beat her. As this when Tsunade would fight off against Naruto, and by this point, Naruto had already removed all the alcohol that was in her system. She's now completely sober. So by this point, she was actually at 100%. And even at 100%, Tsunade was not able to do a single thing, as Naruto was able to take any blows that she threw at him, and not only that, but he was able to hit much harder. It got so bad to the point where Tsunade even thought about releasing and using the seal as a way to beat Naruto, but unfortunately for her, Naruto had already thought ahead, as everything that Tsunade threw at Naruto would be completely useless, as Naruto was unaffected by any of her attacks just because of the fact that he believed it. As this ended up resulting in Tsunade losing the battle, which surprises Shizune by a lot. While the rest of Naruto's team weren't really that shocked, considering the fact they already know that Naruto is the strongest. Now, eventually though, as Tsunade ends up finally waking up and realizing that she lost, she begins to ask Naruto one question. Why did he challenge her to a fight? Why did he make that bet? And this is when Naruto actually reveals something that surprises every last one of them. As this is when Naruto would then reveal that he was next in line to become Okage which surprises everyone, including his team, as Naruto also states that at one point he did end up dreaming about becoming Okage, but eventually ended up losing the spark for it. Naruto said that if he was next in line to become Okage, he would gladly take up the mantle and make the village a better place, but also changing how the job of Hokage works. Since Naruto would see Haruzen slaving away doing paperwork, which pissed him off considering the fact that he's the Hokage of the village, what does he need to do paperwork for? Can he make clones? 
But still, nonetheless, Naruto didn't like the way that the job of Hokage was going. After all, the job was supposed to be extremely important, but the way that they're actually treating the Hokage is more like a servant of anything else. And Naruto, after seeing Aruzen go through it for a multiple amount of years, he had decided that on the day that he ever becomes Hokage, he will end up rewriting the way the role is supposed to be played. As after explaining all this, everyone will be very impressed and once again show a generous amount of respect towards Naruto. Since after all, although Naruto was 13, mentally Naruto was just continuously aging and aging. Thanks to the fact that Naruto believed that since he is the strongest, he has to be much more mature and wiser. So with that being said, Naruto and his team would successfully end up bringing back Tsunade as she ends up once again opening up the medical force. And not only that, but she also ends up taking Sakura as her apprentice. As she saw great potential in Sakura to the point where she actually fully believed that Sakura could even surpass her. Now, the rest of Team 7 will continue on growing as we do a time skip for a couple of years. As by now, Kona has truly prospered, as this was currently the most advanced village as well as the strongest village that was currently out there, as every other village would, would pale in comparison. As all around Konoha, multiple changes have occurred. For example, the academy has completely changed. As back then, Naruto had fully believed the academy had grown quite soft, since most of the time, almost half of the students that are actually placed in the academy and half of them that actually pass will end up not end up living up to the height of becoming a shinobi. So due to this, the entire system would then change, as from now on, they're actually going to teach them the proper skill sets, as well as making sure they have the proper mindset of becoming a shinobi. Not only that, but they're also going to send them out there in the world with more than just three basic jutsus. I'm sorry, but I still think that is so dumb. You're telling me that an academy that's supposed to teach you how to become a shinobi, they give you three jutsus? Look, I understand that they might have taught them more off screen, but still nonetheless, bro, the fact that these three jutsus are so important to the point that you actually fail the entire academy if you end up missing only one of them is just ridiculous. Like, dog, one of them is barely ever used. I think it was only used one time and never shown again. That being that dumb clone jutsu. No, I'm not talking about the Shadow Clone Jutsu, I'm talking about the other one. The one that's just a simple illusion clone. And while yes, that may work for, I don't know, getting level threats, maybe bandits, they're getting sent out there in the world where there's shinobi who are higher than just simple bandits. Like, dog, no, no. So yeah, you already know that's gotta change. But back to the story though. So yeah, the village has undergone multiple amount of changes, it's gotten way more serious and way more safe, as this allowed many villagers to live their life peacefully without thinking that something is going to happen. And Naruto throughout this time was truly the next candidate to become the next Okage, as Aruzen had already begun to announce that he's going to retire soon, and that a new person was going to fill his spot, aka Naruto. Now mind you, at this point of the story, Naruto is only 16 years old, and by this point, he's actually truly made a name for himself. At first, his name wasn't really that popular since he was still very young, but over the following years, Naruto's name has truly spread far and wide, as literally on the very first page of the bingo book, his name will be at the very top of the list. As literally all it ever ends up telling you is to never approach him and to keep out of sight. As that's the only information they end up telling you with many villages willing to give you an extraordinary amount just for him. But every last one of them telling you that you have a death wish if you do so. So overall, Naruto became the, I guess you can say Satoru Gojo of the entire shinobi world. As everyone knew that he was the strongest at this point. Any enemy shinobi that may approach him would literally die on sight, they couldn't do anything. And overall, Naruto is literally one of the main, if not the main reason why the village has prospered to this point. As we now, turn, as we now turn to see current Naruto. Cause you see, by this point, Naruto was once again leading his team, as right now they were hunting down a, a very specific group. This being the group known as the Akatsuki. Now they've been an annoyance for Naruto for quite a while, since on one of the times that he went on a mission by himself, he was able to see one of them spying on him this being White Zetsu. And after getting a full description about what the Akatsuki wear and what they look like, this being from Jiraiya, Naruto already knew that he was a member of the Akatsuki. So bringing out the blade that, that killed Orochimaru, Naruto was able to appear right in front of White Zetsu, and before White Zetsu could make an escape, Naruto was able to stab right into him, ending him instantly. So after that, Naruto decided to just deal with the rest of the Akatsuki since he, since he knows they're gonna go after the Tail Beast. And that's exactly what him and his team were doing. As currently Naruto will be watching Sakura as she finally took care of Sasori and Gatora, as they had just recently stopped by at the Sand Village to take care of them. As she ends up announcing that she's finished, Naruto ends up nodding and giving her a thumbs up, to which she ends up smiling and giving a thumbs up as well. As now that the mission was taken care of, Naruto would then teleport her and him back to Konoha. 
as when they eventually end up arriving, Naruto will be approached by Shino, who at this point was actually in the Anbu, as Shino was actually an Anbu captain by this point. As thanks to his mastery over assassination, Shino was possibly the strongest member on Naruto's team, well, besides him, and due to this, he was obviously going to climb the ranks really fast. As Sakura and Shino end up meeting with each other, Shino begins to explain that he finally took out the other members of the Akatsuki, this being Hidan and Kakuzu, as he alone had been there along with the rest of his squad to take care of them. And he actually ended up using a technique which is meant to instantly kill, as he actually ended up getting this idea from Naruto after he explained and showed them the blade, the blade that killed Orochimaru. So yeah, Shino was doing pretty good for himself. And now all that left was Sasuke. As Sasuke by this point was currently dealing with both Kisame and Itachi all by himself. As Sasuke had grown strong enough to the point where he's actually able to face off against the both of them by himself. As he along with the rest of Team 7 have truly gone above the level of normal shinobi. With many people stating that all three of them were currently the next Sanians. After Tsunade, Orochimaru, and Jiraiya. As we turn back to Sasuke's fight. Now Sasuke by this point has completely dominated both Itachi and Kisame. As by this point Kisame had already died. As he was unable to deal with Sasuke's speed since Sasuke had gained mastery over his fire jutsu as well as lightning jutsu. And due to this, this only left and this only left Itachi. Now Itachi was actually very impressed with Sasuke's strength and was also very proud of him. Since by this point, Sasuke had already unlocked the manga kill and not only that, but he was easily able to keep up with Itachi to the point where he was actually even surpassing him. And this honestly left Itachi very proud since he now knew that Sasuke had grown up to become a very powerful individual. So, after fighting against Itachi for quite a while, and after getting through an emotional battle, it was finally time for Sasuke to end him. As Itachi ends up closing his eyes, ready to accept death, you'd be very surprised that Sasuke would actually do something surprising, and simply knock him out. And you see, the main reason for this one was because of the fact that the information about everything that happened with Sasuke's family was already released. To Sasuke, I mean. And the main reason for this one was because of the fact that Naruto, after finally getting in line to become the next Okage, he was actually given information to, well, very private information that was only known towards the Hokages. And as he does, he ends up finding out about Sasuke as well as the rest of the Uchiha clan that was orchestrated by Donzo. And after hearing this, Naruto at first wanted to do nothing more but get revenge for his student, but he had already decided that he's going to let Sasuke get revenge, as he ends up giving Sasuke the papers as well as the information about this one, which was traumatic enough to the point where Sasuke ends up unlocking the manga kill Sharingan, and he eventually ends up facing off against Donzo. As after Naruto ends up asking Ruzin to put this as a mission, Sasuke ends up easily accepting this one, as he ends up taking down Donzo, killing him, and actually finally end up getting revenge for his entire clan. So yeah, Sasuke already knows about everything that Itachi had done, and while he does want to end up hating his brother and while he does want to get angry at him, he understands that Itachi did everything he did because of the fact that he cared about him and also the village. So while he does not plan to forgive Itachi just yet, and while he does plan to be very angry at him, he does believe that eventually Itachi will end up getting to the path of redemption, as he ends up taking Itachi back. As after that, we can then do another time skip as once again the village just continues on to prosper, as by this point they also got a peaceful treaty with Tsuna since they end up saving the Kazikage from the Akatsuki, and not only that, but they also end up getting a peaceful request from Kumo as well. But you see, the thing is, Haruzen has gone too old. Don't get me wrong, he still has a lot, a lot of life left in him, it's just the fact that He's way too old to be running the village. So he decided to pass on the hat to Naruto. And once Naruto ends up becoming the village, a lot of changes were made. As now Naruto had the peace treaty with Tsuna, as well as the Mist Village, as well as Kumo, but there was even more. As Naruto also made it to where D rank missions, such as like oh cleaning up fences and all that stuff, they don't end up getting given to Shinobi, alright? They had their own hands, they're able to take care of it themselves. And if they don't, they have other neighbors as well as different friends to help them out. So overall, they do not need Shinobi for that. And also, while Naruto is the head of the village, he does end up going out into the field. As after all, he still ends up helping out his village as well as making sure to make transactions, as well as allowing the village to continue to prosper. So overall, Naruto is doing a great job of being Hokage. But unfortunately, things would then come to a halt, as is when finally the last few members of the Akatsuki end up arriving, as this will be Pain and Konan. Pain tries to annihilate the village with the Shinra Tensei, but Naruto is able to stop it as he's able to make a ginormous barrier that ends up protecting from the Shinra Tensei. And this barrier was much stronger than the Shinra Tensei, so that means it couldn't be broken. Now this isn't a surprising pain, but nonetheless he tries to wreak havoc around Konoha, where every one of the other pains will be defeated, as they will be defeated thanks to the new legendary 3 Sanin, 
this being Sakura, Sasuke, as well as Shino, as every last one of them are able to take care of the pains, leaving only the main one. As the original pain tries to fight off against the three of them, he would unfortunately be faced with Naruto, since Naruto had decided to defeat him by himself. As he ends up grabbing pain by the face, he ends up teleporting him to a different area, an area where they're actually able to let loose. And finally seeing that he was alone with Naruto, Pain begins to let loose. As he begins to release Shinra Tensei's Bashun Tenings, he begins to shoot out Chakra Rods, trying to get any hit on Naruto. But Naruto is able to phase through everything, as he simply believed that he can phase through any of Pain's attacks. And this pissed off Pain greatly, as anything he threw at Naruto was useless, he, and it angered him. It got to the point where he even tried using the Chibaku Tensei, his strongest move. And Naruto actually gets swallowed up in this. But as he does though, he ends up chuckling as once again, he's able to completely exit out of there completely safe after the meteor had collided as well. And after seeing himself completely fine, Pain can only ask how and why, but unfortunately it was already too late, as Naruto then decides to show Pain his own meteor. As suddenly, falling from the sky above, it will not be just one meteor, no, it will be five of them as Naruto will make his own form of a planetary devastation, as this will fall right on top of Pain, as he's unable to do anything. As everyone around the village, that were, and this was far away from the village mind you, but every one of the elemental nations were able to feel this, as the meteors would collide with Pain, leaving nothing left, as Naruto had come out the victor. Now eventually Konan had eventually returned back to Nagato, and tried to get him to safety, but unfortunately for her, Naruto by this point was able to sense their presence, and he's easily able to locate them. Now when Naruto ends up arriving, he ends up speaking to both Konan as well as Nagato. Now though Nagato tries to show his very sad backstory and everything, unfortunately Naruto doesn't really care about any of that, as Naruto just states that he's going to continue doing the thing he's always done, that being protecting his village and making sure that they prosper, as he states that he's going to be the one to make a change in the world. Now although Nagato doesn't know if Naruto's trying to make all peace and everything like that, he is happy to see that Naruto is actually willing to make a difference unlike many others, who were very content about how things were going. And with that being said, Nagato decides to trust Naruto's efforts as he ends up passing away, leaving Konan alone. Now at this point, Konan had really nothing else, as she decides to go bury Nagato's body, but as she does, she eventually ends up getting approached by none other than Obito. They end up having a pretty good fight and a very close one at that, but unfortunately, Konan ends up dying. Now back to Konoha, everything just continues to go its way as they continue to grow stronger and stronger, gain more alliance, gain more money, it was just continuously growing as they gained more and more technological advancements. As thanks to Naruto's leadership, the village had truly prospered. As during the following day, as it would be finally time for the Kage summit, Naruto would be invited as he would end up going over there and meeting up with the rest of the Kages. And while he was cool with everyone else, well besides the stone village, this is when Obito would then end up making his arrival as he begins to state that a new world war was going to happen. Now this caused many of the Kages to tense up except for Naruto, as he was just calmly sipping some tea that just randomly appeared. Now Naruto after hearing this would just chuckle and begin to laugh a little bit, as this is when suddenly multiple Naruto clones would then appear out of nowhere, as they all rush at Obito. Now Obito seeing this ends up dodging out the way, activating Kamui luckily, as he ends up looking at Naruto one last second before saying that he already has plans for him, with Naruto raising an eyebrow at that. Now, we now turn to the next following days as they prepare for the war that was happening. Well, other villages prepared. Naruto's village has always been prepared, as even newly minted Genin were already at this point on tuning level, as they were all ready for the war that was going to happen, and even that of Jonin's and higher ranks were also getting prepared as well. Civilians were already at this point getting evacuated and getting to safe places, so yeah, Naruto and his village were just chilling at this point. And Naruto himself had been the most calmest person throughout this entire scenario since Anything that they could potentially throw at him, he could deal with it. As during the following day that the war was announced, Naruto would end up appearing along with many other soldiers of the Hidden Leaf Village at the battlefield. But when they end up arriving though, this is when suddenly Obito would then make his appearance known, and standing right beside Obito was none other than Madara Uchiha. Now this plan was very hard for Obito, considering the fact that he lost so many valuable pieces, but luckily he was actually able to pull it off and bring back Madara although it did take a lot of setbacks and a lot of hard work. And after seeing Madara, many of the shinobis would then tense up in fear, as even the kages that were there would also be afraid, but only Naruto was the one who was calm, as this is when Naruto's team would then approach him, as Sakura would then grab Naruto's arm. 
Now Naruto would be very confused, as he ended up looking at Sakura confused as well as everyone else on the team, as this is when Sakura would then ask Naruto if he could win. This ended up causing some deja vu for Naruto as he remembered the very same questions asked when he went to the land of the waves. But just like he ended up responding to her back then, he responded the same way now, as he declares once again that he, alone, is the strongest. As this is when Naruto would then teleport and appear right in front of Madara, staring him down. As both individuals would stare at each other, Madara would be very shocked and very impressed with Naruto, as he smiles, already declaring that Naruto was the strongest, but Naruto already stating that he already knew, as both of them would instantly get into fighting each other. Now Obito tries his best to control everything that he could, as he tries to actually help out with Madara's fight, but unfortunately Madara did not ask for help, as he continues fighting off against Naruto. Now as Naruto and Madara continue fighting off against each other, causing ginormous shockwaves, this is when suddenly Obito would then smirk as he ends up announcing that finally, it's time for the war to begin. As just as Naruto was fighting Madara, as Madara had just used his Susunoo by this point and was releasing waves of great fireball jutsu to which Naruto was just calmly smiling, chuckling a little bit as the fireballs were approaching, this is when suddenly bursting from the ground would be none other than the ghetto statue as it ends up releasing a bunch of chains that wrap around Naruto. This ends up catching Naruto off guard as well as everyone else as this is when Naruto would then be dragged inside the ghetto statue before he can get a second thought. As just like that, everyone would watch in shock as the strongest shinobi that they have ever seen had just been sealed away. As instantly, a large amount of panic begins to spread around the entire battlefield, with many people trying to run away for their lives. All the while, the rest of Team 7 as well as the rest of the Konoha group continue to stay behind to face off against Madara and Obito. As everyone part of the Konoha group would be very pissed off, especially the rest of Team 7, as they couldn't believe that Naruto had gone sealed away, and this pissed them off greatly as they decided that they're going to free him using everything they got. As they end up fighting off against Obito and Madara, as this would continue on for a couple of minutes, with surprisingly none of them dying, as everyone in the Konoha group were actually way stronger than they were at this point in the story, allowing them to keep up and actually last longer than they did in the main timeline. And this also applied for every other villages out there since the Konoha group were helping out a majority, preventing a large amount of deaths to occur. Now this will continue on for a couple of minutes, just as Madara was growing stronger and stronger. But before he can grow any stronger though, this was only a ginormous trembling would then happen throughout the entire battlefield. And not only the battlefield, but the entire elemental nations. As all around, the entire elemental nation will be trembling as something was about to be unleashed. Obito will be very confused as he tries to make sure that everything was okay, but as he does, he ends up turning to the ghetto statue. The statue that had been holding in Naruto. As he ends up finally realizing what was going on, he couldn't believe it. There was no way. But it was already too late as suddenly bursting from the ghetto statue, destroying it completely. As we see Naruto as he ends up walking out of it, completely fine, unscathed, and more of all, he looks very relaxed. As Naruto would then yawn a little bit, he then smiles, thanking Obito for the nap, which had surprised everyone throughout the entire battlefield. As while everyone was in a war thinking that their lives were on the line, Naruto was inside the ghetto statue the entire time, doing nothing more but sleeping. And literally, he could have broken out of there whenever he wanted, but he just wanted to take a little bit of a nap. This surprised everyone, including Madara, who then begins to laugh like a maniac, truly declaring that Naruto was the strongest of them all, as he decides to face off against him, now deeming both the Renegon eyes and now being at a higher level of power. But even with that, Naruto was still stronger than Madara. As the fight between Madara and Naruto would undergo the second round, Naruto would completely dominate him. As now that he had gotten his rest, he's actually beating the living dog crap out of Madara, as he's unable to do a single thing. All his jutsus end up having no effect on Naruto, as Naruto by this point had just activated pretty much invincible mode. Which literally is actually just Naruto fully believing that from now on, nothing works on him. Anything that may poison him, injure him, be life threatening, all of it has no effect on him. As Naruto's imagination has truly exceeded that to the point, where it truly deems him as someone that stands above everyone in the entire verse. As this will cause any attack that were thrown at Naruto to be completely useless. Any poisons, anything that may weaken him, all of it would have no effect, as Naruto truly was the one that stood above each and every single person in the entire verse. As Madara would continue to lose to Naruto, as this will be an embarrassing sight as the ghost of the Uchiha was losing to the one who stood above all. As by the time that Naruto was finally done beating down on Madara, Madara was currently still trying to regenerate, but unfortunately it was still too late. As this is when Naruto decides to finish it off, bringing out the sword that took down Orochimaru and many others. 
as he ends up turning directly towards Madara. And Madara seeing this would then smile as he ends up declaring that he's glad to finally go out facing off against the strongest. And after hearing this, Naruto would nod his head as he ends up stabbing into Madara, ending the fight. As everyone there who had watched it would then engrave it into their memory, as today was the day where they saw the strongest of two different time periods had faced off against each other, with the strongest of today's era winning. As all that left was Obito, by this point Obito was completely done. Everything he had tried, all his plans, had come to failure. As he tries to make one last escape, trying to see if maybe he could salvage something, but unfortunately it was way too late. As he ends up turning around, he sees Naruto as he ends up smirking and ends up grabbing Obito by the neck. Now Obito tries to get away as he tries to activate Kamui, but Naruto had already planned for this one as he fully believed that that Kamui was going to fail, and it did. As Obito couldn't activate Kamui because of the fact that he was too afraid, afraid that this was going to be the end. As he begins to state a bunch of rude and hateful remarks, unfortunately anything he tried to say was useless, as this is when Naruto would then suddenly end up slamming his fist directly into Obito's chest, ending him instantly. As with that, this will put the end to the war, as every other village begins to cheer for their victory, all the while Naruto had stood above all of them as the strongest as well as the MVP of the entire fight. As after this, we can now do a time skip into the future. Once again, Konoha has truly begun to prosper once again. I know I've said this a lot, but it's true, as by this point, Konoha has become truly the number one ruling village, to the point where it even surpasses that of the Damios. Now, the Damios themselves have to pay their, their respects to Naruto, since if he wanted to, he could just simply erase them from the earth. Although Naruto would always make some crazy threats like that, many of them knew that he was never serious about it unless it was an enemy, as Naruto had stood and remained at the top of the world. He still kept the role of Hokage, of course, as Naruto had to serve as a Hokage for many years. But as Naruto would rule as a Hokage, he would actually be remembered as the strongest as well as the best Hokage of the era, as thanks to his goals and achievements, Konoha was a much peaceful and safer place. Many students of the academy that could have lost their lives because of the fact they were unprepared were actually saved because of the fact that the shinobi system was taken more seriously. And not only that, but Naruto was a Hokage that was so respected that every other village Kage that ended up eventually taking the position would want to be exactly like him. As this will be the end to what if Naruto had Grammy's abilities. Thank y'all so much for tuning into this what if, hopefully you guys do enjoy yourselves. Don't really got much else to say except for the fact that my throat feels completely dry right now. And yeah, that's about it. So hopefully you guys do enjoy yourselves. Hopefully you guys enjoy the what if. Either way, it's your host, Seiji Samurai, and he's signing off. Peace, and have a lovely day.